One of the biggest challenges in my life is facing conflict. I hate confrontation. I conflict with conflict. I go to great lengths to avoid big conversation or anything that can be remotely perceived as tense. I will smile and nod. I will walk away. I will act agreeable. I will drive miles to not have a tense conversation with people. Swallow my pride and move the fuck on. That doesn't mean I don't get mad. Obviously, I get mad. I just bottle inside, bottle it up inside and use unhealthy coping mechanisms to manage these emotions. Fun. Sometimes it feels like some of the biggest arguments I've ever had has been inside my head. I've had epic dialogues and arguments with everyone. And let me tell you, they have been dramatic. I am lucky though, uh, my boyfriend and I don't fight very often. Uh, that is mainly because he can't keep thoughts inside his head, so we discuss things right away. It can be annoying, but at least the guy is efficient. Arguments seem fun though, from afar, from afar. I love hearing about fights and getting all the juicy gossip about them. They are so dynamic and exciting, again, from afar. They seem like they could be such a release. I'm speculating. Again, this is out of my realm of expertise. next year oh, and i'm really? like these these guys are gonna eat me up they're gonna kill me i feel like i'm gonna hate hate everyone i'm just <laughs> nervous like everyone's so good and so like yeah already settled yeah i can't imagine they're like oh yay another one you know <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> so you're moving to toronto when are you doing that uh next year it's gonna be for 2025 okay so okay. we still have another full year but, okay uh, Oh my gosh! Yeah. What like what made you decide to do that? Um, I think I was just kind of done with like this city for mm. comedy wise. At least like I just feel like I need another push of motivation to yeah, like, get a better. A little bit of, of a challenge yeah. or just a change. It makes yeah. sense. Like, just a, yeah, it'll help you grow no matter what. Yeah. Like even if it's like it feels. Even if you do it and it feels like, oh, this is just like a linear progression, yeah, yeah. like at least you, you know, it's an experience for sure. Yeah. yeah, I feel like and even I'm not even sure if like stand up is the vibe or if writing is more like it just there's just more to do there. And mm-hmm. that's like English entertainment. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to okay. try it. Michelle lives there. And she's yeah. my best friend. So yeah. I'm like, at least I yeah. have like that anchor. And she's already kind of like sussed out the scene. Oh, and, yeah. And... She she knows it now. Yeah. Like she's <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's been in it for like a minute. So yeah, she'll, so it she'll wouldn't be too bad. Lead the way, yeah, oh, yeah. It's less intimidating if you know someone there, yeah, for sure. And like, I've done two just for laughs Toronto's. Well, mm-hmm. worked. I haven't been in the festival, yeah. but worked uh, there twice now. So now I've really like seen the scene and met a few people. So now yeah. I feel like comfortable enough yeah. to be like, okay, I could probably like, get some yeah. spots, not to be you like for sure will. jumping for sure. in. <laughs> and like yeah. your credits mean something too, yeah, for sure. So. I hope so. It, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's so exciting. That's yeah. so cool. Well, we still get you for another year, so that's, yes, so that's yeah. good. Still, still a whole year, yeah. Okay. I'm, my uh, Kean's going to come with me, and he <gasps> wants to like finish one more year at the restaurant he's at right now, and then get another job at another restaurant there. Okay, okay. Yeah. So okay. I kind of need to like wrap up the loose ends, and then it'll, yeah, it'll yeah. bounce. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> it's like a two year max thing, though. I feel like I'm going to hate Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> Just as a city, like, I don't mind it. Like, and then try somewhere there, else, like, I guess. Yeah. That, it would be yeah. like, a, that's like the sort of like first move, and then it would be like somewhere else. Yeah. Like, somewhere bigger. Yeah. Better. I mean, Mike and I, um, my boyfriend and I always say, like, we keep bringing it up to each other like oh we have to like experience a different city we have to yeah. go to another city yeah. just like just to challenge yourself a bit yeah. like even if it's not for comedy like for me it would be for comedy like I wouldn't choose a city that had like one I open mic scene. yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um but yeah 
Uh, let me just check it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's recording. <laughs> um, yes, like, just because, like, I grew up in a small town, moved to Montreal, but the small town that I grew up in is an hour away. It wasn't much of a, you know, yeah, hurdle. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I have family in Montreal, so yeah. I had, like, you know, Safety support net. system here. Yeah, yeah. Um, it would just be really cool to go somewhere that, like, um just somewhere new some like something a little bit less safe and secure just yeah. to like push myself out of my comfort zone yeah that's what i want too and it's like i, I even like worse than you i like grew up here like this is like where i was born raised and like sh- hopefully shall not die like i like <laughs> i just like need to like try living somewhere else like yeah. you know and then i feel like the general like the like easiest progression would be toronto yeah and then from there i can go like hopefully like overseas or yeah. to like yeah another country like whatever yeah. it is like yeah okay start with Toronto. and i mean um also welcome to house of stone <laughs> the podcast where everyone has a story and we get into the nitty-gritty of it all uh we'll get back to what you're saying and i mean to like interrupt you i'm just like we should start it yeah i was like some i like like a like um like a start like that where it's just like chatting but then i like sometimes i'm like oh yeah we gotta like <laughs> we gotta start the podcast yeah so this is house of so this is my guest today uh kira carlton thanks for being here no problem thanks for having me <laughs> <laughs> no problem i've been wanting to have you for so long i'm really excited yeah. i've been watching i've been watching you oh i've god. been listening to you oh my god i love it i love it i have a lot of comedians that listen to this yeah, podcast yeah. like it's just that's basically who i make this for at this point which is great which that, is your audience like. yeah that and like some other people that are very curious about comedy mm. um so that's cool whatever yeah. doesn't matter i don't care who my audience is yeah. long if you're as you here, listen also like it. and subscribe because i see you i see you watching <laughs> and not liking and subscribing uh but it's all good it's all good uh so i have a little uh introduction for kira like always i introduce my guests so people get to know a little bit about you um so kira uh is a comedian writer in uh Im- oh my god i i knew i was gonna mess up this word <laughs> improviser <laughs> Born and raised in Montreal. Over the last three years, she has shared her wholesome edge, witty wordplay, and candid storytelling with audiences all around Canada. This past summer, she was featured at Just for Last Zoo Fest, hosting the Discovery Series, which is a um, a spot that every comedian wants <laughs> uh, every year. Uh, and she got it. It was amazing. I saw her perform. It was so much fun. You did such a good job. Um, and the the recording's available now on um, the ZooFest YouTube channel. So Just for Laughs YouTube yeah. channel. ZooFest and Just for Laughs, yeah. right? Okay, yeah. And she's also a weekend regular at the clubs here in Montreal, the Comedy Nest and Third Floor uh, Comedy Club, where she's open for DJ Demers, Andrew Simmons, Chris Robinson, Casey Corbin, and many, many more. Uh, so welcome, Kira, again. Thank you. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's I, that was so weird. I was like, wait, who are you talking about? <laughs> I'm talking about you. Who is that? I'm talking about you. Yeah, guests gets super weird when they hear their bio. Yeah, out loud. I've never heard my bio. I realize as you're reading it, I was like, wow, this is a, what a silly bio. <laughs> what, a, what a silly bio. Can't wait. It's can't not. wait to have like a real credit. You know, like <laughs> you do have real credits. Oh <laughs> know, my god. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is a little awkward, and I feel like sometimes, like when I said my bio bio out is like, it's. It's too long sometimes. Yeah, like, no yeah. one needs to know any. It's just, I'm a comedian, podcaster. Just shut the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah, I literally, the first time I wrote a bio, I was like, what do they want from me? <laughs> like, what do you mean? <laughs> Most, I've had that, like, from comedians. It was like, hey, like, I'm promoting a show that you're on. Do you have, like, a bio? They're like, no. I'm like, can you give me the right one? Yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, like, and I know these people have credits. I'm like, yeah. how is, how am I the first person to ask you? Yeah, that's the thing. Like, especially like, you know, it's my third year doing comedy, but yeah. you know, year one and two, I had zero credits. And yeah, I was no, like, you don't. what the fuck do I write in a bio? No. Like, I was really like, I yeah. am, like, this Kier Carlton, <laughs> 
comedian question mark like can i even call myself that like it's like the chef cook like yeah. distinction where you're like yeah. am i a chef or am i still a cook like i yeah. feel like i'm still a cook i'm a comedy cook like i'm not yet i can't be like i'm a comic like it's like chill like you, you know yeah you make yeah. 20 dollars. Like, like chill out i think my first time like my my first time I needed to give someone a bio, I had my best friend write one for me because nice. he he's a writer as well. And um, I was just like, just come up with something. I am completely stuck. I don't know what to yeah. say other than like, I don't know. Yeah. An, an open mic or since blah, blah, blah. Yeah, like, just, like I, where you're from and like how old you are. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. It's just like, it's so odd. Anyways, it's, yeah. it's totally fine. I, I'm, and also I've had comedians give me their bio that had like their work experience, like other than comedy. Nice. They're like, Oh, I studied this. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm like, okay, that's fair. It's like, kind of sick. That's like a LinkedIn. Yeah. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have a version of my bio where I say that I'm like, like I said, I talk about my job because it's comedy adjacent. Yeah. Oh yeah. And so Very then I was like, it's super, it's, hey, it's in fact so comedy adjacent. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. It's actually in comedy. It is comedy. <laughs> it yes. is comedy. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. And so I was, but then I was like, well, no, because in my mind, like I have like two, I'm like living a double life. Like yeah. I, I'm like in working in comedy and then I'm also like working on my comedy like we're doing yeah comedy. it must Very feel different. like it has to feel like that because yeah. you're like you're part of like the production and part of it marketing part yeah, of it yeah. uh, of this huge like the biggest comedy festival in the world yeah and then you're 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 trying to make your way as a performer yeah. as well. i don't know how you can't like it must yeah. it has to feel different because yeah it's like, i have to it's segment too, them it's, or it's too weird yeah like it's weird it's too weird if i like do a show and like you know someone that i know from work is there yeah. working yeah and for you can't them just to, ignore yeah that, but i also like but... i kind of like weirdly like obviously this this really hasn't happened often maybe like twice where like okay. i've been performing in a show and somebody that i work with has like been at the show okay. working working and i'm always like you know, I'm sort of like. Are we like not supposed to know that this person is like a just for laughs like rap? Or... No, the, it was like for showcase. Like for example, oh. like you know, like you know, when Neil was doing all the showcases, yeah. like obviously, like in some capacity, I work with Neil in the yeah. sense that we both work under the just for laughs yeah. umbrella. Yeah. But we don't work at all in the same departments. Like yeah. I wouldn't, see, I would never like send Neil an email. Like yeah. you know, like we're yeah. not like unless yeah, I was like yeah, hi yeah. Neil. Like yeah. we're not like directly related in our work at all. Mm -hmm. And so it's but so it's like not really weird to see him at a show because he knows I'm a comic yeah. and also just work yeah, for Schlafs, yeah. but it's also like part of me is like okay let's not talk about work though like <laughs> let's talk about comedy you know like because it's I'm like I you know I don't, yeah. don't want to be wearing my work hat when I'm yeah. doing my like when I'm in my comedy space yeah oh, no. absolutely it's no no it is weird it's two different hats yeah two different two different hats, hats. that's fine we, we all we all keep it profesh <laughs> we I am like also just I have no like because I, I work in marketing, I'm mm. so far removed from, like, any of, like, the programming or producing yeah. side of things. So yeah. it doesn't actually, like, for me, luckily, it doesn't, it doesn't really get awkward because yeah. I'm, like... It would be awkward <laughs> if you were part of, like, the booking and, Yeah, like, well, you wouldn't and... be able to do stand-up. Like, if yeah, you're no. on, like, if you work for You'd just You'd be, like, laughs, completely like, biased, yeah. right? I'm pretty sure... I don't know if that's, like, a set-in-stone set in stone house rule. <laughs> A little pun, a little pun for the pun look lovers. At you. Go. I don't know if it's like an official rule, but I imagine like if you work for yeah. like programming and stuff, the, none of none of the programmers do stand up like yeah actively now. So oh okay yeah okay have they? Or... I imagine. Do you think a lot? I don't of... know. I, I I wonder like I don't know like I, to be honest, I'm not like super because I said like I'm not in that department, so I'm not like super close with a lot of the yeah that team. But yeah, I wonder. I I, I guess yeah. maybe I don't know. Like Do you I think it would make I, you a better programmer or a worse programmer? Yeah, I think it might make you. I think you would know comedy a bit. Like it's more like you can speak that language. You know, like yeah, like as a comedian, like like I when I go to a show, I'm like, oh, that person. Whether it's a like, if it's a pro am show, say if I go to a show like in a different city, like I can like really scout out who's the pros and who's the like mm -hmm. amateurs so i don't know if that like hinder help you yeah. like or can anyone like distinguish between like no. it's just because like when i when i talk to like family members going to like a show or if a family member comes to a show of mine 
um, they'll they'll be like they'll they just think they see the sh- the show as like a whole like just one thing. Yeah. And like yeah, they'll have their favorites, but they can't like. I go to a show and I like pick a park like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like yeah. it more or like oh I see where that person was going and that's such a good joke and yeah. blah 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 like um I think it would help or maybe it was a hinder I don't yeah. know yeah I, I think know. it depends on like what you're booking for like I imagine yeah. you know if you're booking for some like there is like a good part of understanding what it's like to be a comic to book comics yeah. because especially for like writing gigs or yeah. like really important like high stakes shows. Yeah. I imagine you'd want to like you'd be like okay we have to book someone quite like yeah like established established and comfortable because yes. like it's not even just like you know anyone can go to a comedy show and see and understand who the best comic is just based yeah. on the laughter that the audience gives yeah. them like that's yeah. so like unbiased you yeah. can see like For who the sure. best comic is yeah just yeah. based on the audience reaction yeah. Yeah. but if there's a whole other element of like okay if you're opening for like you know freaking bill burr yeah you, you're gonna sh- you're gonna shit yourself like you're, gonna, <laughs> yeah. you're gonna be so nervous so you need to find a comic that's like seasoned enough to yeah. be able to control their nerves and oh, perform sure. and like be like consistent but then also like yeah. you want the best like the comic that's gonna make the room oh, laugh absolutely. and you want a comic that works well with like the demographic of that audience like, yeah there's so many things to think about there's, but in my mind i feel like so a good factors. team would have both like yeah. a good team would have people that like have been comics and therefore like understand like the mm-hmm. nuances and writing and like performing Absolutely. but then also people that haven't been comics and just can objectively be like that's funny yeah like, absolutely you need so i'm wondering what the ratio is like yeah. at, at just for laughs like, i don't know who has and who hasn't you guys should send a survey out send, yeah i'll go i'll go ask <laughs> it could be anonymous it's just like it's just to get a percentage hey everyone who's done comedy just want to know <laughs> even one little dingy open mic that counts <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly Exactly. That's know. so interesting. Um, so we always have a um, a theme for the episode. We always start with it. We haven't started with it. We went on a different <laughs> tangent. Uh, it's just to get the juices flowing. Um, so the, the topic today is um, conflicts and arguments. Mm. I chose this because I wanted to talk about it. Uh, but also, you seem like... A very like easygoing person and yeah. maybe that is wrong um no you're correct <laughs> <laughs> and i can relate to that yeah. in a way because like i avoid conflict to the end of the world like I, i'll avoid it and i'm just like i'm very like oh, i don't give a shit like yeah, yeah, i'll same. just like uh just very easygoing so I'm, so you you can relate to that yeah real yeah yeah i think like I, I wouldn't even i don't know if it's that i'm easygoing i'm a huge pushover like <laughs> oh my god <laughs> like i yeah. li- i li- like, i'm not firm in almost anything that i say <laughs> i will change my mind tomorrow you can change my mind right now like i'm very like you know easy to easy to like make Make compromise like yeah. I will do the compromising I don't mind and, I, yeah. and not in like a way where I'm like resenting you later I'm literally just like that's fine like no problem yeah but also I'm I'm very like it's not that deep about yeah. everything yeah like in I, my I'm mind I'm like I don't want to argue like I like yeah. just don't care like, yeah yeah you know? it's not that deep we'll get over it even if yeah. I do it, even if it is fluttering my brain right now I'm just like oh let's just like sit on it for- <laughs> yeah let me I'll eat something I'll be yeah. better like I'll take a shower changed opinion like i don't know i feel like also like my family is so such different characters like and my and my parents are divorced so there's like there was like a a lot of arguments a lot of like you know my my sister's very argumentative my brother's very like sort of like um standoffish okay and then i'm just sort of caught in the middle so i'm just like i don't care yeah I'm not yeah. going to fight you. just you. experienced enough conflict in your life. I'm like, like e- let's, we're good. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you experience a lot of conflict growing up then? Uh, I imagine. <laughs> yeah, I think like, yeah, I guess so. A lot of it was behind, that's the thing too, is I feel yeah. like I was always made like blissfully ignorant okay. because I, my sister obviously took like more of like the okay. sort of like, Okay. I don't know the yeah. damage. She sort yeah. of like protected us from the damage because she was the oldest. She's old, the and oldest. Yeah. Me and my bro- brother uh, were just like older this sibling is... usually does. That. Yeah, for sure. Well, you don't realize it till you're the till you're old enough to to sort of like digest yeah. everything that went yeah. on. Like for sure. But yeah, I would say a bunch of conflict. Also, my family is just massive, so there's just so many talking heads and like so much. <laughs> How many people are in your family? Well, my my like immediate family isn't too big. It's just me, brother, sister, mom, dad. Okay. And then, but I've had step siblings. I have step siblings now. Oh wow. I've had, 
uh, like, like in terms of my cousins, yeah. I, like my mom has five siblings mm-hmm. and they all have like two, three kids each. Like, so it's just like, we're like 20 people on like, my mom's side and then my dad's side is just like, holy shit. Brothers, but, uh, yeah. That's crazy. Lots of, and we're all like loud Irish people. So it's just like simply drunk and just <laughs> yelling and everyone's a comedian in my family. That's Not amazing. actually, but like they want to be for sure. <laughs> it's crazy. Are you the only comedian? So far. I mean, officially, but okay. <laughs> off record, they're all They're hilarious. all hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. I have a big Irish family, too, on my mom's side. And, like, why are they so loud? So what? loud. And they love to laugh, even if it's not at anything. They love to drink. I love it. And they do. I love it, too. I deep down love it. But they're, they are deeply problematic a lot of the time. Oh, yeah. It's also, like, so difficult to integrate an outsider into my family. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, you know, obviously, when I was a kid, I didn't, that wasn't an issue. I wasn't, like, <laughs> I've literally just never had a boyfriend to bring home, like, <laughs> to the extended family, at least, because they don't all live here. So when we do get together, it's sort of, like, yeah, holidays and stuff. Yeah. But... Yeah, I remember, like, my dad was always like, man, your family did not like me or whatever. Like, even I could see it, like, when my mom, like, when my stepdad first got integrated, there was, like, a lot of, like... Yeah. Just, like, awkwardness. Yeah. Yeah. And then then it's fine. They get over it. Okay. Yeah. It just takes time for, you know, that, those type of people to, like, warm up to people. Yeah. And, like, what I... I don't know if you can relate to this, but, like, with my loud Irish family, the way they communicate and express that they like you is like insulting you oh yeah <laughs> like borderline insulting you yeah. just just like hey you still you still doing that you know you still doing those jokes on stage like, yeah yeah it's a little rude like yeah, yeah i'm a professional yeah. comedian <laughs> you still you still gagging on stage <laughs> yeah doing those, you still doing those gags yeah they yeah. they're my family's like that too like i feel like <laughs> Roasting is like a love language okay. in Irish Absolutely. culture, Absolutely. like hundred percent. Not that I like now. So now, like you know, my partner is actually Irish, and in, in terms of the fact that he like came to Canada from Ireland and like has yeah. an accent in his family, yeah, so lives in Ireland. Yeah. So I, when I say I'm Irish, I mean like generationally. Oh, same. <laughs> like, same. I'm like fifth generation. Yeah, or for something. sure. Like Not it was actually... potato famine in Ireland. Like that's yeah. that's where I'm from. Is like that sort of like migration out of yeah. potato famine era. Yeah, but but still it's yeah. still like the roasting is, carries yeah. over uh, yeah like, yeah so your boyfriend's family like roast and yeah they're loud and they or like he just likes like he expects that and likes that i feel like now i saw a tiktok recently that was like i will never speak poorly about my partner like that is disrespect like i would never and i was like oh fuck like <laughs> that's that's how, how you, you know how i you love do you that? like <laughs> how do you do that i don't like, know and not even like i understand like you know not being like cynical towards your partner yeah. but i'm like yeah. roast them like yeah. it's fun like Absolutely. keep things light like you know yeah. obviously don't like rip apart their actual insecurities but like yeah for sure just be it's, mean it's funny because one of the biggest arguments mike and i have ever got is because i like was like i subtly like roast him in this like i guess it wasn't i don't know like my for some reason the okay it's a long story but my um my sister's boyfriend made her cake for her birthday and i was like oh that's so nice and i told uh, it was like in a group of people and i told everyone like oh my sister's boyfriend made her cake for like a homemade cake like handmade whatever however you make a cake yeah. um for her birthday and like and then i jokingly looked at mike i'm like you would never do that to me uh. <laughs> you would never do that for me uh but as that was a joke because i mean I guess he would, but I just know he wouldn't. He yeah. Just like, well, he's not he, a baker. He's never baked. <laughs> yeah. Unless I'm like, we do it together and it's this like kind of cutesy yeah, yeah. like event that yeah. we do on a Sunday. He's not, we're not going to go out of our way. Like I won't go out of my way and make him yeah, yeah. a cake. It was just like a little jokey little roast. Little jab. Like, look, my, my sister's boyfriend's better than you or something okay, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And like everyone kind of giggled and whatever in the group and then like, hours later Mike and I were alone I was like how could you think that about me oh no oh wow yeah I guess he thought he thought I was like re- he was really insulted oh no and I didn't realize oh my god to be fair roasting is like such a thin line and you have oh, to yes. have like roasting consent off the bat like yeah. I would never roast a part like my lat like my my sort of boyfriend before my current partner mm-hmm. and forever partner love you babe oh my um, god no shut the fuck up cut that oh my cut god that. that's so cut cute. it no. I love I just, it I hate saying current partner because it sounds like yeah, there's an expiration is, date yeah i just mean like the guy i'm with now who's yeah, amazing yeah. but 
anyways, a previous partner of mine was very... I couldn't imagine roasting him. Like, he was... He, not that, like, he didn't have anything roastable about him. It's just, like, that he was just such, like, a kind, kind soul. Kind. And I was like, I don't want to break you. You, like, you don't want to hurt You're you not, like, you anyway. have that. Like, you need to have the roast shield. Yeah, fair. And it's, like, a specific characteristic that yes. you can have or you don't have. And Absolutely. I don't want to play with it if you don't. Yeah. But, like, my my boyfriend now, like, he and, like, he's... He's like, you gotta roast me. Yeah. And he's like, he's game for it. So I'm yeah. like, perfect. Like, Does he roast you back? Oh, yeah. Oh, I like, love that. I, but I remember when we first started dating, like for the first, like, even like five months of dating, you know, obviously you're so like, yeah, you're, in, in, you're just like in enthralled this by each other. Yeah. Like, you're just so like, yeah. you know, not the, I couldn't even think, like, obviously I was like, I guess I could roast you, but I'm like, I just don't, like, I'd rather just praise you. Yeah. But yeah. now, like, obviously it's been like almost a year. So we're mm-hmm. getting into a, p- a period where we're like comfortable enough with each other yeah. that we know there's like mutual respect and we yeah. can just like roast yeah. each other a bit, yeah. which is so fun. That's I love a great roasting. zone to be in. Yeah. Like, once you like, I mean, the beginning months of a relationship are, like, really, really special and, like, um, really lovely. And But, like, once you get, like, really comfortable and you're just, like, you're fully, like, yourself, it's, yeah. it gets real good. <laughs> yeah, it's so fun. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah you're, you're not, like, afraid of yeah re- being rejected on, <laughs> on your roast anymore and you're like, this is oh, a game. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. So that's nice. You and your partner have been together for a year now. Almost in that's March. That's crazy. Yeah. That's yeah. so cool. How'd you guys meet? Uh, well, he's comedy adjacent. Yeah. Which is great. I semi knew that. Yeah. I, I mean, ever, it's funny because yeah. everyone. Oops. It's okay. Sorry. I'm going to remove this because I'm super, <laughs> super sweaty. Um, <laughs> it gets warm in here with like the lights. It's just me when I talk. I'm like an 80 year old woman. I'm like, fuck, I'm sweating. Um, yeah. So he, like, it's funny, like, most comics knew him because he's been in the comedy scene for longer than I have, but he's not a comic. He's a, he basically is best friends with, with Quinn McMorrow, like the producer. Yeah. Um, and used to live with him. Like when he came, so he came over to Montreal from Ireland and couch surfed at the loft. Yeah. Like art loft, shout out. And, uh, I think like, Everyone does. Yeah, I probably every. <laughs> you comic... move to Montreal and you live at the art loft <laughs> for like a few weeks. Every comic in Montreal lives at the art loft for a few weeks. Yeah. And, um... Also, would be my worst nightmare to oh, live there. Oh, literally, like, yeah. and, well, okay, <laughs> I'll tell you how we met, and then I'll tell you this next thing. But so basically, like, he lived there for a bit. Now he has his own place in the yeah. in the plateau. But he's like super good friends with Quinn. And when he lived at the loft, he started. Yeah. He's a DJ. Like he does. Um, yeah. He's like a vinyl DJ. Like he spins records, which mm-hmm. is really cool and so he's he djs like the art loft shows basically yeah. um and uh so i met him at the art loft show i okay. performed i think i opened for oran shout yeah. out oran for being the matchmaker <laughs> yeah <laughs> not he had nothing to do he with it he i just prob- he did nothing i attribute it now every time i'm on a lineup where either i open for oran or oran opens for me and not in the sense of like headlining but just like the position yeah. on the lineup yeah. i'm always like it's gonna be a good show <laughs> Or I'm yeah. like, if Oren's there, it's gonna be a good show. Oh yeah, he was always. There when I met, always. When I met Oren's a fucking Kim. killer. He yeah. will turn a show around. Oh yeah, yeah. That too. He's yeah. really talented. Yeah, I love Oren. This is an Oren Stan podcast. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we met. I did. I performed, and we met there. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much it. Any like you guys recently went to Ireland together? Yeah, we did. We how, did. How was that? So nice. It was your first time in Ireland. They would say yes because we went to <laughs> we went to Galway, which is on the west coast. Yeah, yeah. I'd been to Dublin. Yeah. I'd been to Dublin, Hoth, and uh, Kilkenny, like just okay. just yeah. just the east coast. Yeah. Um, and according to people on the west coast, if you've only been to Dublin, you haven't been to Ireland. Yeah, I went to. I made sure to go to Gal- Galway when I went, and it was the best. Like driving oh, yeah. up, I drove up the coast there and stayed so in the nice. Airbnb. Um, my cousin drove because I was scared. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's literally <laughs> fucking terrifying. Like, listen, loved Ireland. Respect to the people. Yeah. Those fucking roads. I, yeah. like, first of all, you're already driving on the left. It, yeah. it depends. Like, there's, like, obviously there's that, you know, sort of, like, the big highway. If you go from Dublin to Galway, like, across yeah. the country, that's, like, a regular highway. It looks like yeah. driving from Ottawa to Montreal. Like, yeah. it's yeah. super normal. Yeah. But the, the the roads in Galway and on the coast are super windy. Like Windy, narrow. There's sheep everywhere. Oh. <laughs> there was a cow on the road when we, when we drove from Galway up the coast to the cliffs of Moher. And yeah. 
all like along the way there's a like, tour buses which are like um, fatter yeah. than the road yeah. like the it's so funny because the road is maybe the width of like a car and a half yes. and they just put a white line in the middle yeah. and we're like it's mm-hmm. two ways and there's like people the people that live there obviously they know how to yeah. navigate but like so like if there's a car coming they like there's like little like like lanes that they go down and yeah. then they wade to the path but like it's not intuitive and like it's it's scary and it's not it's scary yeah. there's also like well kian did all the driving while we were there because yeah. he knew like the roads and stuff like he yeah. at one point it was pitch black that's the thing too is there not a lot of lights unless you're <laughs> in true. galway city like yeah. if you're just like out on like yeah. you know in any other part of town yeah. at night it's pitch fucking black yeah. and yeah. so we're like driving and he was like oh we're about to go up or go down corkscrew hill and i was like no <laughs> no i don't that sounds awful to me i, I don't think want that we to do shouldn't that. do that <laughs> i think we shan't do that but other than corkscrew road uh it was a fab trip no oh my god it was great. how long were you there for like 15 days That's crazy. yeah That's so i met so his whole cool. family all his friends like from from uni and oh my god sort of childhood and yeah it was so That's nice so cool yeah. now you have like a place to go in ireland i know and that's I, why you date people from that live dude, from the uk it's or crazy Europe. ireland's also like one of my favorite countries i had ever visited and now that i've visited sort of like the more beautiful part of it yes. and like yeah. just like getting to actually be there with like people that live there like locals yeah. getting to see like more nature i think when i was in dublin it was a lot of just like yeah you know bars like a lot of pubs a lot of like touristy yeah. things dublin a lot of, is like... very touristy yeah and it's a city yeah like that's not really my vibe when I no. like travel. No. Um I loved uh going to Belfast in Northern Ireland. Yeah, I'll have to um, do that one day. Uh, so like it was a short trip from Galway and Dublin. Um and it was it was really fun. Mm. Yeah, that was a city I really liked. But they're also like we drove up the coast there and that was beautiful. Like, so nice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I wanna go like all the I wanna go all the way down. Like I wanna go to Cork and I wanna yeah. do That's like... where my family is supposedly from. Ah. Is from Cork. I didn't go while I was there because it was just wasn't part of our itinerary, but which Damn. was dumb because like when's the next time I'm going? I, I don't know. know. But Well you'll you can come with me next time. Okay. I'll go back. Okay. I really wanna go to and Cork. Stay with like your <laughs> yeah, yeah, my boyfriend's family. Just like, hey, I'm just gonna tag along. Honestly, ignore me i'll just sleep here (laughs) (laughs) it's so crazy though like while we were there like obviously we're hanging out with all of his like friends and they're all european and so they like i remember one of his friends was like oh i'm going to paris for the weekend for a hundred bucks i was like we can't even go to toronto for a hundred bucks like that's crazy no i'm so jealous it's such like a burning jealousy that i'm like like kian was telling me like his family used to vacation like they'd go camping in Spain, yeah. And like obviously, like he was like you know it wasn't like a lu- it wasn't like a luxe part of Spain. It was yeah. just like sort of yeah. he's like that but was just still. close. I'm like that's crazy. Like yeah. I drove to Maine, we go, we you know? Go, yeah, we <laughs> like, go camping in like Ontario. Yeah, yeah. Literally, <laughs> like it sucks. Yeah, we, we this country sucks now. Like I do. To be fair, I am like such a. I am very much... He's, like, a, such an ocean boy because he grew up literally right on the ocean. Like, his parents' house yeah. is, like, two plots of land down from the sea. Yeah. It's gorgeous. If you love the ocean, like, you know, his... Yeah. Like, you know, he grew up surfing and they're very, like, ocean-centric, his friends. For Whereas I'm, like, a lake person. I yes. love lakes. Yeah. I love, like, yeah. you know, still water and, 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 and like, boating and swimming. So, yeah. yeah. Any type of water. Same. Fuck me up with an ocean. Fuck me up with a lake. Throw any... me in. <laughs> Throw me in and leave me there. Or just like you know, a a pool. <laughs> yeah, real. <laughs> a baby pool. Um. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. Um, that was really nice though. When did he? Last question about your boyfriend. Then we <laughs> want to you. This is about when me. Did you move here? Uh, I think like eight years ago oh, when he was twenty two yeah. after university. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Awesome. I'm yeah. so jealous. Yeah. I mean, my boyfriend's family's from. Italy, but it's like I... three generations. That's <laughs> like us being Irish. Yeah. <laughs> Still, at least they have good good food. I don't have. Yeah. Ireland, Ireland. Ireland has bad food. Okay. To be fair, the food I had was really good when I was there, okay. just because of the quality of the ingredients, like okay. the butter and the and the yes. eggs, and yes. and I love um yeah. what's it called brown bread, like soda bread. Yeah. I fucking and I like Guinness. It was great. Yeah. But it's not like no one's like 
seeking out <laughs> Irish food. You know, like no, my Nana no. can't cook for shit. I love you, Nana, if you're listening. Yeah, because I know you love podcasts. Um, <laughs> it, yeah, I know. I know that you know what podcasts are, Nana. My hundred year old Nana. Um, but she can't cook for shit. Like the only thing she can cook yeah. really well is like Christmas dinner. It's it's, <laughs> it's it. a it's a white person thing. Yeah, I think <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> it's my. My grandmother did know how to cook, but it was usually very fatty, salty, like, so how can you go wrong when it's covered in butter? Yeah. Um, but yeah, my mother is the worst cook on this planet, planet. has never been able to face a spice jar, <laughs> like, yeah. to season things properly. <laughs> um, it's horrendous. <laughs> It's oh God, so, yeah. it's so bad. I remember my brother, like, discovered smoked paprika when he was 19, <laughs> and he was like, holy shit, this is insane. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> Spice paprika. Dude, he was holy like, holy crap. This is insane. Seasoning this with everything. He was like, like salt, on pepper, this. smoked paprika <laughs> yeah. on everything. Yeah, for sure. That's it. I started cooking as a child and teenager because my parents were terrible cooks yeah i was like i I can't i can't deal with this this is so terrible but it's fine i started cooking pretty young too because my dad well when my parents got divorced it's like you know shout out to single dads but like they're not cooking good they're not cooking well okay grammar police they're not they're they're you know he worked long hours and then he didn't want to come home and like make a meal for us so he would just like we'd get like takeout or he'd or low key, he would make expired food. I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> it was a lot of botulism in the family, and so I would make my own food. Plus, I like have I was like vegetarian slash mm. no red red meat for like a long time, and yeah. he, my family's very not yeah very not vegetarian yeah. friendly yeah. So I just ended up starting to cook for myself when yeah. I was a teenager. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I uh, I grew up with a very meat heavy family, and I don't eat meat anymore. And yeah, that's been a weird thing for yeah. everyone. Um, okay. <laughs> what did your, did your dad do a lot of, like, barbecuing? Because I feel like if my really. dad was left to his own devices, it would just be, like, meat on the barbecue. Yeah. I mean, my dad <laughs> did do some barbecuing, okay. I suppose. Yeah. Because I'm just wondering, like, what concoctions? It expired was, okay, concoctions. Okay, literally, he, what he, he would put... do, he would cook, like, he would have, like, you know, sort of containers. Usually, we would eat, like, he would buy, like, a roast, you know, those, like, grocery store, like, roast, like, rotisserie chicken yeah. you can buy in a box. He would buy yeah. that with uh, um, St. Hubert gravy yeah. in a box, yeah. and that was our dinner in coleslaw, and yeah. that was our dinner, which was great. I mean, that's not bad. Not bad. Still yeah. something I would not, eat today. Not a, I'm not complaining Can't about complain. That. Uh, it was that, or we would get, like, you know, sort of, like, the whatever takeout places we had, like, near our house. Yeah. Um, or he would do this fun thing where there would be, like, containers of leftover food, usually, like, a rice, some veggies, and, like, okay. maybe, like, old-ass, like, chicken legs. Okay. And he, at the end of the week, after all the food had reached its, like, prime, just sort of food poisoning <laughs> potential, he would create, like, sort of, like, a poisoning pilaf, just, like, a rice dish that would ruin your fucking gut. I'm I'm convinced that's why i have ibs is because okay. i lived with a single dad and he yeah. was like let's make just ruin the... every friday yeah let's fuck up her shit <laughs> let's let's see what she's made of i bet some of it could have been really delicious though it kind of was yeah. like it kind of yeah. was good but <laughs> but like it, it's like my and it's not even like i don't mean expired like ooh, it, there's a little it's a little yeah. tangy yeah. it's a little ooh, it's a little tasty i mean like there'd be like caesar salad from 2016 and Ew. it was 2022 like it no. was bonkers. Ew. Yeah, that, that'll that fuck up the bio in your oh, gut yeah. for sure. It gave me such bad trust issues with food safety and food. Like, I'm so yeah. anal now yeah. about, like, like I check people's you should, fridges. You like, should, be. Yeah. Con- you should be mindful of it. Yeah. A lot of people aren't. And they're just like, oh, they'll, ch-, like, but no, like. I have a good, like, system of, like, getting rid of stuff. Yeah. Because I, I, I just can't. Yeah. And I, I also, I'm just, like, I have a weak stomach. It just, Same. It's just the that. idea of something going bad in my fridge. I'm like, yeah. I gotta get it out of this apartment. It's the weak stomach, and I'm so afraid of food poisoning, I, I can't even fathom it. And, like, you know, my boyfriend has, like, such a strong stomach that to <laughs> him, like, you know, he's a chef. Like, he eats, like, okay. a million different things and sometimes yeah. different done levels of doneness. Like, and yeah. he's just, like, whatever. Yeah. But you know 
it's like when I'm at his house and all like you know making tea, I'm gonna put yeah. cream in my tea. I like yeah. check the cream box. Yeah. Like I yeah. tr- like I trust people, but I also will never trust their food. I'm like <laughs> I need to check that this isn't expired before I eat it. Yeah, yeah. Unless it's like unopened, yeah. then I'm fine. Yeah, my um my cousins um have lived with a mother that was very weird with food, where like she like just hoarded food and like she never mm. went through her fridge. So they have this like this instinct that like as soon as they get something they smell it to see if it's gone ah. bad like milk smell it milk, like yes yeah, it's, it's kind of what you're saying oh, yeah. like it's just like it's like they don't even think they just smell it just like you gotta be, because they they've been fucked up a few you times have to. too many times you have to <laughs> yeah no no i uh, yeah it's just it there's some things i'm sure in my parents cabinet that are so old oh yeah so old but that's fine. Story <laughs> they can time. they can live their lives. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's nice. It's like a family heirloom, you know. Yes. Just <laughs> passed down. Yeah. It's ma- smoke smoke paprika. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From, you know, 1999. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they're like cream of tartar, which my mother probably used once to yeah. like make cookies once is like at least two decades yeah. old. Yeah. <laughs> It's always the baking powder for me. I'm yeah. like, I like, to, you know, I like baking, but I don't have that much time to bake. So yeah. usually it's like, you know, maybe once every few months I'll yeah. bake something. Yeah. And like baking powder, I'm like, ah, <laughs> it's always expired. I don't think I've ever baked something with baking powder that wasn't expired, which yeah. is so yeah. like not conducive to like a good bake. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they should sell is. quantities that are like good for, yes. you know, once in a while bakers. Literally two tablespoons. Dude, there needs to be smaller containers of so many condiments yes. for people that live alone. Yes. Like, I cannot go through a jar of pasta sauce to save my fucking life. <laughs> I don't know what it yeah, is. Yeah, and once you open it, you gotta use yeah, it. Yeah, you got, like, three days and that shit's done. And I'm not, like, <laughs> I'm not, like, a meal it? prep mommy. Like, I'm not, yeah. like, making, like, 12 portions of pasta and, like, having a good time. Like, yeah. I'm, like, you know, I get sick of something, like, I eat it twice and I'm, like, I don't want to eat this ever yeah. again. Yeah. So I'm, I'll use, like, half a jar of pasta sauce and then yeah. that rest of the jar is always thrown out. Yeah. Or, like, well, I could be smart and freeze it, but I'm not. I don't do that. <laughs> so if they could make, like, half portions of, like, yeah, they should. pasta sauce, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. That and, like... I don't know. I know ketchup lasts forever. But, but ketchup like, too. It's like who? It, it'll be in my fridge if I'm left to my own device. It'll be in my fridge for like three years. Yeah. If I let it. And, and I like ketchup, but it's like you know yeah. you don't need too much. Yeah. <laughs> like I put ketchup on a lot of stuff. I put yeah. ketchup on eggs. I dip like grilled cheeses in ketchup. See, I I'm put not, ketchup I'm on not fries. I'm a big ketchup person. I'm being more oh, of a hot ketchup. sauce person. Okay. I- yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hot sauce is the only thing I finish, I would say. Oh, absolutely. I have seven things of hot sauce in my fridge at this moment and i know that within a month they'll be all gone yeah i don't know i love fucking hot they're sauce. so good it's so they're good so... it doesn't really go bad too fast either no no in my mind fuck me up with some condiments but yeah, not yeah, ketchup yeah <laughs> mayo too there's like it's like it's like once a month i'm like ooh, i want a tuna salad and then <laughs> and then i just have mayo and it's like i don't know what to do with this mayo yeah. like i'm i'm i don't i guess i don't make a lot of meals that require mayo no it's what is it like <laughs> burgers maybe yeah uh and Real, i guess a grilled salad. cheese if you're fancy on the outside i don't yeah. know yeah. like a, if you made like blts i don't really make blts i'm not a big b person <laughs> yeah I'm not, I'm not a bacon gal <laughs> i don't yeah. know like mayo is the one where i'm like it's like if i want like a ch- like a like a chicken salad egg salad or tuna yeah. salad yeah. i need mayo and how often do you crave that not that often literally right? once so they a need year. like little jars that's big yes like <laughs> Yes. Like, the shit that you get at, like, a breakfast buffet. Yes. That's, like, a little mini peanut butter yes. and a little mini jam. And they have a little mini, like, yeah. need that Yeah, they in my do house. sell those, I think. But, like, but, you, so but then again, they sell it in a pack of, <laughs> yeah. like, like 17. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, nah! Yeah. But then you're, like, stuck with the same. I problem. need, like, an opposite Costco. Like, I need, like, <laughs> Costco, Costco for single 100%. people where it's, like, small versions of yes, everything. 100%. It's, like, you know, 15 Tide Pods. Like, it's, yes. like, you know, like... <laughs> Yeah. I just don't need. Yeah. Okay, Tide Pods is a bad example because you can keep that forever. But like, yeah. you know, yeah. I don't need a loaf of bread. I need half yeah. a loaf of bread. Yeah. Yeah. No. I that need three you can bagels. Freeze, but then it's never as good. It's never as good. It's, like it's no. never as good. The texture is always a little off. Yeah, I think we're like this is a brilliant idea. This is a million dollar. Listen, idea. 
Just like a grocery store for single people. Listen. <laughs> it's one, cheaper. Cheaper. You're less wasteful. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm yeah. thinking like, I'm trying to be less wasteful. 2024, yeah. less waste. Less waste. Tiny yeah, Costco. Let's not do this. <laughs> yeah. They, they give, they you know, like the Costco hot dog. It would be like cocktail wieners or something. <laughs> this is like seriously a good idea. Whoever's listening. I think invest in this somebody needs to do this yeah. or we need to take the initiative which yeah we probably won't oh uh, <laughs> hey i couldn't even if i tried i would never <laughs> take initiative no no we would have to convince a million companies to make small versions of their yeah. things although yeah. maybe they would yeah maybe I don't know. i'm just excited to like live with a man again well i, I imagine in my ma- in my mind that men just like eat everything that you can eat Yes. I'm like, you're my garbage now. Yes. That's they, what I hope. It, it, it's true. I hope so. Mike will just like, I'll have like two days worth of leftovers and just throw it in a bowl, no matter what it is, and just eat that. Nice. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Just, they're so simple. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I re- I'm just having flashbacks. We're talking about like little mini versions of mayo. I just have flashbacks of like my parents at the Costco version of mayo. Oh my god! And then like getting it every time they go, and I like Costco size version of like peanut butter. Just getting it every time they go, and I'm oh. like, how? What were we eating? No, literally, I was in Costco like two weeks ago, and I was like. You, you know, I've always been on the edge. Do I want kids? Do I not? I went to Costco. Yeah. I said, I don't want kids. I yeah, said, I don't no. want this. I don't want to ever be the mom with her kid hanging off the cart going, we need mayo. I don't <laughs> ever want to be that bitch. I will never, ever be that bitch. No, on a Saturday when I could be taking a stroll and getting a little coffee and a yeah. croissant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, no. No. Oh, my God. I I am team no children. No. Like, I am almost 35 now. And that is, it, I decided a long time ago. Yeah. That, plus, like, I have other things to do. I'm going to be distracted with a little, like, crotch goblin? No. It's, there, there's so many, listen, I'm still <laughs> I mean, fence, you do you if you want to But I, I know, I'm pretty, I'm, like, fairly certain it's a no from me. <laughs> I'm big on the I really want a dog. I want multiple dogs. To it. But, yeah, kids are, it's crazy. Like, there's so many, there's so many cons to <laughs> there's a to lot of cons children. with them people are like yeah but they you love them so much That's of course you do biggest... like it's like yes okay get, yeah get fuck off like if like i had that. a kid of course i would like be a good mom and love yes, them like yeah a dog a question but it's more like and also i feel like there's so much villainizing of like people you know or yourself it like the, a lot of people have kids because they're like you know having kids is like the thing that gives me purpose. Yeah. I don't want that. I just want to have a purpose yeah. to live. I feel like without I have a purpose child. without a child. Yeah. <laughs> I have a, a lot of different purposes. Yeah. And it doesn't involve a child. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not the good person. I will not. I will enable this like no kid thing yeah. for the, like, I really not, not a kid person. Yeah. But I get it. They're cute. Like, I do I can... like kids. Like, yeah. Also, I worked with kids my whole life. Like I was really? A, I was a camp counselor a <laughs> gymnastics coach i did like gymnastics like routine really? choreography yeah. private lessons like and then i worked in another camp i worked at a sports camp like i literally have worked with kids in like every facet so you, you paid your dues exactly yeah. i'm like i basically like fucking disciplined half the kids in, the, in, yeah. in canada at yeah. this point so <laughs> no i did not i did nothing but but i loved working with kids like i really i really love working with kids it's just the best part of working with kids is that is you <laughs> literally literally the best part about working is, with kids is that you get to like experience you know because kids are like so fun and nice and it's like cool to see people that haven't been tarnished by society yet you know like they have their they're so like bright eyed and like hopeful and like fun and then also like you get to learn how to like be disciplinary in some ways and like you You learn a lot from working yeah it's great it's like super fulfilling but then you get to go home yes and you don't have to take them with you yeah and you get like a night to yourself yeah you get every oh, night to yourself. A night to yourself? Like, that's the best. Just, like, Dude. no noise. No Just, noise. Like, no I don't one have to, needs ugh. to be fed but yourself. That's a thing. And even then, ugh. you don't have to do that if you're too tired. You literally... I don't want to, like, have to answer to anyone. <laughs> 100%. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. So you were in gymnastics? I need yeah. to go back to that. Yeah, I was, a, I was like, a competitive gymnast growing Holy up. Holy shit. Yeah. For a long time then. For a long time, till I was 14, and then I and then I became a gymnastics coach immediately after. 
Wow. Yeah. What was yeah. your specialty? Um, I think my best event was probably bar, uh, maybe beam. Bars, mm-hmm. bars and beam, and then it switched to vault okay. right at the end. It's funny how like gymnastics are so many different things oh yeah and you just uh, when you talk to someone that's like into it they're like they they just dabble in a bunch of different them it's like because if you're like say like a football player you're into football yeah you may have like one pos- and you're in one position yeah yeah you <laughs> are a, a tight end like that's yeah. who you are yeah yeah where like a gymnast is just like the flutter around all oh over yeah the place. it's crazy like gymnastics is such an insane sport like yeah there's it's there's so much so many levels of like skill and like the yeah. just like in general like the fear aspect is crazy like yeah it's also like why you have to start so young like that's like why i quit yeah. gymnastics pretty much was because i was like starting to be afraid of all the moves that i was doing and i was like really? it's such like you can't if you're yeah. afraid like you're done like literally like the last Olymp- not to like make this about gymnastics <laughs> but the last olympics like simone biles like she she blocked like she had a block moment where she like couldn't yeah. get a certain move out because she was like it was like a blind landing so she couldn't like it's like a very scary thing to do yeah, and she sure. couldn't do it and then she just like didn't complete the olympics and it's yeah. like it's that like it's like if you when you're young you have no fear you're mm. just like curious you're just yeah. excited to try things gymnastics yeah. is so fun until you're it's more scary as a child. yeah you can get hurt and recover like, yeah and yeah gymnastics is so fun until you realize how fucking insane the shit that you're doing is and yeah. you're like oh my god, there are so many consequences to these moves. Like, yeah. So and then you you're like, like, fuck that. I guess you have to go through training to, like, get rid of that. Like, that's part of, like, the, yeah. the training of it all. Just, like, you've yeah. got this. You have control of your body. Like, It's a lot of discipline. It's a lot of, like, obviously, like, safety. Like, learning yeah. how to fall. Learning, like... Yeah. It's also just kind of a lot of, like... Like, you know, it's very... It's a very different sport. Like, I've played a lot of sports. I was, like, very, very sporty growing up. And yeah. I've, I've done, like my share of like team sports and individual sports and like the coaching and gymnastics is so particular and that you have to trust your coach so much because they're telling you to do something that could really hurt you like really hurt you you. they have to be there to to spot you if something goes wrong but also like they're yelling at you like they are yelling at you to do shit that like you know isn't humanly possible for a lot of people (laughs) like yeah and you just have to do it like you just have to be like okay like my coach is like my god and i have to listen (laughs) like and you just have to do it and then (gasps) wow i can't see you as being like i like yelling at people coach no i wasn't to be fair like i wasn't doing high level like right i was teaching like like, young kids yeah somersault (laughs) literally i was teaching four four and five was my favorite age roll around on this it is four and five year olds like is such a great age to teach gymnastics because they're like not like rude yet yeah like i taught some like 11 to 13 year olds and i was Mm, like this is a lot i used to teach parkour classes to like 13 year old boys Parkour, that's a thing (laughs) it's it's so funny i like it's part of gymnastics i need to like write jokes about this shit i have like i have lived 12 lives but did you just like get hired by like a gym and like can you just literally okay the gym that i used to work at like didn't they were like they want they wanted to like sort of like I guess, like, appeal to, like, the demographic of 13-year-old boys because, like, they, you know, gymnastics is yeah. largely, it's, like, largely female sport where I Let's was jump on these things! They literally were, like, they were, like, Kira, can we call a course parkour and you just, like, make it parkour? And I was, like, okay. And then I basically had to, like, just, like, make it up. I was, like, okay, if I just pile a bunch of boxes up and, like, make them jump from, like, a trampoline onto a box into, like, a foam pit and then, like, swing from a rope, like, that's parkour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was it and i was like i would That's i would set so it up funny i would set up these like crazy courses yeah. where it was like like all these boxes teetering on each yeah. other jump over a beam onto a trampoline into a foam pit and like that was it this and I, like, I would test it i would be like okay i'm gonna do it once and if i don't die we'll all do it <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny i yeah. wouldn't even test it i'd be like just go it was kind of that's fun. the challenge yeah. <laughs> and you're also like I don't know. You just know that they're going to fuck it up no matter what. Yeah. 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 That's so funny. Maybe you have a future in American Ninja Warrior, like, set design. Oh, uh-huh, like Wipeout. I love yeah. that show. <laughs> yes. I love Wipeout. Is that still on? Wipeout. I don't know. I hope so. I'm a big Wipeout stan. <laughs> I remember it. And also, if you turn that show on as end with American Ninja Warrior, 
you can't not stop watching it. I know. It's just something about it. Just like, are these people going to make it? I it's know. Just, you, you I love stop. it. It's so good. Wow. wow. But I did, like, I have played a lot of, like, pretty intense, like, dangerous sports. I guess, I don't know, dangerous, but, like, gymnastics yeah. was the first one. Yeah. And then I was also a rugby player. Shit. And so, but then I never broke... I never broke anything. Okay. I, like, have been injured, but the first time I broke a, a bone thing. was, like, <laughs> drunk. Like, you know, I like, guess, like, I don't know. I guess, like, a, tes- a testament to, to learning how to fall, I guess. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so what led to, like, you were a gymnast to, you know, communications and now, like, yeah. comedy? Yeah. Well, I was a gymnast, and then yeah. well, I was a gymnast, soccer player, ringette player. Where my through my was my trifecta when I was a kid. Yeah. Then I had to quit ringette for time time wise because yeah. I was yeah. doing like triple A soccer and oh, wow. competitive gymnastics. And then also, I imagine it was expensive. Yeah. I, I now I in sports retrospect think about it. Sports are very expensive. Yeah. Yeah. When I was older I was and started paying for sports, person, it's expensive. So I don't know, but yeah. I. I like my hairdresser has like seven kids really she has four uh she has so many kids and she tells me all the sports that they're in and like all the activities and I'm just like how so much time that she consumes to driving these kids around oh yeah watching whatever they're doing and then the money like it's so expensive it's really expensive like it it gymnastics is very expensive yeah. just for the courses but also the, the gym suits the yeah. competitions yeah they're usually out of town like it's mm. f- it's so expensive okay. but yeah so i then i was soccer and gymnastics and then eventually uh, i quit gymnastics and was doing soccer and dance and i started dancing and then i became really into dance and oh, was okay. like a hip-hop dancer okay. and was like wow. d- training like competitively and okay. trying to do i was even doing like some it's so weird it's all like very full circle now but i used to do auditions for just for laughs gigs actually i had been in a just really? for laugh show as a dancer before i was ever a comic really <laughs> yeah that's so cool because french comics do a lot of very theatrical things it's like oh. there's a huge clowning element to french comedy right, right. and so they would always yeah. hire dancers to do like sort do, of like acting and background dancing and stuff okay. yeah okay. that's amazing that's so cool yeah it's super <laughs> weird like i met Rashid Badouri, like okay. I was a backup dancer for Rashid before I met him as a comic. Like that's so weird. So weird. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So you got a taste of like performing. Yeah. So I got like yeah. I got a real taste of the stage as a dancer yeah. and knew that I loved like the sort of also it starts in gymnastics when you do a floor routine you're the only one on the floor the yeah. music is on so yeah. everyone's watching you it's yeah. like a huge draw to you like limelight yeah. situation and i loved i knew i loved dancing from that mm-hmm. and then when i started dancing dancing being on stage i loved that and performing mm-hmm. and you you learn a lot about we did we took acting classes in dance okay. because we were doing all di- au- auditions and there's a huge element of like facial expression and sure. performance sure. like yeah when you do choreography and so there was that element of like performing arts that i I started to like and then mm. I I always knew I was like into be- telling jokes and being okay. goofy yeah and so then I started to do improv in high school and that's when I that was the pipeline it was like the improv to stand okay. up okay. yeah the pipe- that usually is yeah <laughs> I've never done improv but I, I hear a lot of people coming from improv to it's embarrassing it's <laughs> don't do it <laughs> it's, good. it's good training yeah it definitely is you get more loose on stage with like yeah talking you know I don't know I haven't done improv I should like take it out of my bio because I yeah. I did improv in high school like really in <laughs> Yeah. intensely I mean, and I stopped why yeah. why because I hardly counts. even do crowd work now like it's like <laughs> you would not be able to tell that I did improv it's the only thing that improv that was helpful and improv and dance I will say like a testament to both is that I'm very comfortable on stage now yeah, yeah. but otherwise like I'm still shitting myself I'm still not like hey where are you from I'm like <laughs> I'm sticking to my set list bitch like no but you're a good host though I remember seeing you host for the first time stand up St. Henry it was like a year yeah ago. yeah year and a half ago yeah, yeah. or something i don't know i remember that Anyways. for Elspeth. Yeah, yeah yeah it was like you were you're really good and then i've seen you like now and you host often yeah and you are good like nice. i mean you don't have to like you can do crowd work as a host but like you can do very minimal of it and get away with it yeah it's still a good opening yeah you know something about like when i do crowd work obviously it's just like means i need to get better at crowd work but i find when i do crowd work at certain spaces 
I feel like it diminishes like my like their belief that I'm actually a comic <laughs> like I don't know because I I feel like I do like really like the part of comedy that is the writing and I do yeah. like pride myself yeah. on being a good or yeah. at least trying to be a good writer yeah and then so when it comes to me going from like doing a joke that I'd written to crowd work it feels so like amateur my approach to crowd work that I that I just can't like but that's because it's like the start of yeah it the joke so it's like it's not I I think it's meant to be amateur I guess I don't know especially now that there's so many crowd work clips online in my mind when I do crowd work I'm like oh these people think I'm trying to be Matt Rice like you know like you said, they, they think I'm doing like an impression fair, of like Bill fair. Burr but I'm like yeah. just trying to be myself yeah but yeah 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 I it's mean tough. it takes practice I am not the biggest lover of crowd work but now it feels like the clip game is strong and that we have yeah. to like be clipping ourselves doing crowd work but we don't have to. We, we don't have to do anything we don't want yeah. to do. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I like, the only part, like, version of crowd work that I enjoy that I do often is, like, leading into a joke with oh, crowd work. absolutely. Because that's really good. so good. Because yeah. yeah. they're, like, then they think that the joke's about them and yeah. organic. And you're, like, no, no, this is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I We've love been planning that. this. Like, I love that <laughs> I love so it. much. I have a joke right now that I'm um, sussing out um, about being from a small town and I ask if like anyone's from a small town and then it just goes in yeah and like I have like two different versions depending on what they what they say it's like I love it (laughs) yeah I love it it's so good and sometimes you get you do get like the one thing I like about crowd work is that you do sometimes get like responses or something that that like sort of inspire you to write something else oh yeah or like absolutely trigger like a new joke which that's like iconic but yeah. rare <laughs> for me <laughs> usually it's me being like oh great thank you and then going right great, into that's a joke cool yeah i'm happy for you thank you Moving so on. much um, i'm gonna do some jokes now thank you i was at the open mic at the nest last week and there was an i was the only kid like there were I was there was like eight comedians and then it was me and there was two people in the front row up the, on the side that were making out half the show and because it was an open mic there was a lot of newbies they didn't address it and I was oh, like no. I get on stage and I was like okay what the fuck dude what like, are we doing and I get off stage and like one of the comedians in the back like that's when you know like that you're the the more pro yeah. because like you're just like hi oh my goodness i couldn't let that go that's like you can't you can't there's certain things where you're like you have even if you're like what am i gonna do with this you're just like i need to say something yeah if you're wearing a funny hat like okay i have to say it yeah you want the attention yeah yeah so that there's some times where i like the crowd work yeah yeah not all the time because yeah. some audiences just don't want to be fucking talked to. They don't also... And I don't want to... Montreal is such a funny city for crowd work <laughs> because it's such, like, a culturally rich place where it's, yeah. like, most of the time they don't yeah. speak English. <laughs> they're Maybe they're French. Maybe they're from out of town. They're, yeah. they're tourists. It's a big tourist city. Like, yeah. it's a lot of people that... Or have never been to a comedy show, so they're like, why are you talking to me? <laughs> like, they're older. They're not on TikTok. Yeah. They're like, yeah. what the fuck is yeah. happening? Like, yeah. I came to watch you. Like, yeah. <laughs> so it is, like, a very, like... It's a weird city for, stuff, for crowd work. Yeah. yeah. It's not like going to, like, New York and doing crowd no. work. No. No. Where people are, like, expecting it. Yeah. Uh, in certain places. And, um, yeah. Anyways. Interesting. And then there's, like... The whole, like, with the growth of, like, Matt Rice style yeah. or whatever, there's some people that are really expecting crowd work and they don't get it. And they, yeah. like, they heckle you. There's some crowds that, like, really heckle you more. I've seen a drop of that recently, but there was a point, like, in the last year, I'm like, yeah. why are these people so chatty? Yeah, there, it's for sure, especially with younger audiences. Yeah, and, for sure. And also, like, I hate when it's, like, a room where every like comics that are doing material are bombing and the comics that are just doing crowd work are killing and it's not even as as, because they're necessarily masters of crowd work it's just the audience is being selfish like the audience is like yeah i want you to talk to us like we don't want to hear what you and obviously like that's you know Mm -hmm. a seasoned comic i imagine yeah would be good enough to be able to do both and do material but sometimes you want to try your material you don't want to talk to them sometimes you're like I wrote this shit. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. I kept going coming off stage for a while, like, oh, they really want attention. Like, because I would start with material, then, like, I would talk to them, and then, oh, then that, I would win them over. I'm like, oh, guys, we got to talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's what, like, 
I got anyways I saw a drop of that though recently yeah. I find but maybe I'm wrong I don't know I, I think so too it was big in the summer I feel yeah. like the summer people were crazy yeah yeah anyways so what got you into stand-up Michelle Forrester. <laughs> <laughs> Not surprised. We started together. Actually, we, me and Michelle, who's an amazing comic, uh, yeah. lives in Toronto right now. She's a new face. Yeah. She's been um, on, a, on an episode. Okay. So yeah. It's like yeah. her. Yeah. My girl. People, people know who Michelle Forrester is. <laughs> she's, my, she's my best friend. Um, and she, we started on the exact same day at the exact same time. We That's did the same first show together. So funny. That's yeah. so cute. It's Were you so cute. best friends then? Yeah. So yeah. literally, it's kind of been like, it's funny. Me and Michelle did improv together in high school like we went to the same high school she's a year older than me so she's a grade older than me and she we did the improv together when i was in grade 10 and she was in grade 11 and then my graduating year she was gone and i did got to do another year of improv and then we sort of like knew each other but weren't like close friends because of the grade difference like whatever and so we like crossed paths a few times but we ended up both living like she lived in verdun and i lived in saint henry Mm -hmm. and we both like randomly one day like we're on the canal like she was like running and i was walking or something Mm -hmm. and we like ran into each other and she was like oh my god like like are you still interested in like comedy and stuff because we both did um communications at concordia and we went to this talk once where a late night show uh writer like someone Mm -hmm. that wrote for late night yeah said like if you ever want to have a writing gig in comedy in television you need to do stand-up he basically said that he was like everyone's done stand-up so we both kind of were like fuck we need to do (laughs) stand-up and she was like are you still down and i was like kind of and then we, we decided to start going to shows together Amazing. and we got really intimidated by the nest like yeah. immediately just we were kind of like there's yeah. no way i could ever do that oh, really like literally we, we were not in a sense of like i get it though because it's like it's a venue venue that's it yeah it was too venue it was too like it's not even a, in a sense of like i'm not as i'm never gonna be as talented as people on stage yeah. obviously there's an element of that too yeah. but it's more like the idea of standing on the stage in front of all those people with that yeah. venue and the red light and everything. Yeah. Like I was like, sure. that is For too sure. fucking much. I was like, yeah. if I'm going to do stand up, it's going to yeah. be at a pub, like yeah. Yeah. In, in the back corner of yeah. like a little bar. Yeah. 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 So, I yeah. wish my first set was like, le- like my first set was at the nest. Oh and my God. So intimidating. Dude, there's no way I couldn't. <laughs> I literally could not fathom. And I've, I have really bad like performance anxiety. Mm. Um, is that, can yeah. you use that for things that aren't sexual? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, I have that. Uh-huh. Um, and so I was like, there's no way. And then we decided, finally, we had met two guys that I don't even... Well, Jesse, I don't think, does comedy anymore, but he was somebody that used to live here and do comedy, moved away. And uh-huh. then Mike, um, yeah. latest, like, he was doing comedy, and he was friends with Michelle. And so we got in through Mike, like, got booked uh, mm-hmm. with Sid, and then okay. did our first show at a club that doesn't exist anymore, or, like, a bar it's like somewhere in the old port oh was it a, i forget the name i think of like it. red something or oh, wood something Rose, or rosewood rosewood yes rosewood. yeah okay. first show at rosewood yeah. and then the pandemic happened yes. so then we yeah. and then we stopped doing comedy for yeah. like a year yeah. and then picked it back up after yeah that's so cool yeah it's like you guys started it was that's such a nice experience like being able to start with someone and you're yeah. still doing it yeah like we would write and together had, you guys have had such sorry interrupted yeah. you because you guys have both had such like an amazing like trajectory in like yeah. the past three years yeah like, i mean especially her like she blew up so fast like then moved to made a big move to toronto she's yeah. writing doing screenwriting now she's yeah. a new face of canada yeah. like yeah. crazy and i mean you did discovery series yeah and, like that's a that's a huge deal yeah for sure and and now you work for just for last. i know it's so weird <laughs> like it really it really is really weird like if you told me like three years ago at my like old job that i would be where i am now i'd be like yeah. what <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> what led you to just working for just for laughs uh well so yeah i got a degree in communications yeah. and video um production mm-hmm. uh and then uh i worked at a company called watch mojo which is like a youtube channel for okay. anyone in the <laughs> okay. watch mojo.com should I, should they do I top tens this? they go welcome to watch mojo and today we're counting down well they do top oh, ten okay. lists of like entertainment shit okay cool. um but so i worked for them and i did um their social media like i managed their instagram tiktok mm-hmm. uh this is when tiktok was just starting this was like at the like four years ago yeah. um and so tiktok was just becoming a thing after having been musically and they were like we need someone to run the tiktok and then so i started 
I took over their TikTok from like a hundred thousand followers, maybe less, maybe like seventy thousand, and built up their TikTok to a million followers. That's amazing. Yeah. So it was really fun. Like I just got to edit videos and do like fun, trendy stuff with movies and TV and just like kind of mess around and be yeah. use like comedy but in like a tame way. Yeah. yeah. Um but yeah, I did like their I was a video editor. I also did some hosting, like I did some digital stuff, like Yeah some countdowns for them and then after that I had all that experience working in social media I I had a friend that I worked with at just at watch mojo who quit I took over her job and then she went to just for laughs and she like a year or two later Mm -hmm. after the pandemic like had like subsided a bit Mm -hmm. she knew I had started to do stand-up I started to do stand-up before I worked at just for laughs like I started to stand up like two years before Mm -hmm. and she was like oh my god you should come to just for laughs like we're looking for basically the same position that you have but okay there would be you know you'd be doing the same stuff but for a comedy company instead of a movie and tv company yeah um which is definitely more my forte yeah so yeah i just went over and that's, got the job that's so cool yeah that's so cool yeah and you're enjoying it yeah i love it yeah it's funny like when comics find out that i work for just for laughs they they assume i work there because i'm a comedian but it's super separate. Like, I yeah. work there because I have the credits. Pretty, like, I have yeah. the degree and I have yeah. the experience working in marketing. Yeah. But I just yeah. happen to also love comedy. Yeah. Like, I happen to be, like, kind of, like, mm-hmm. the ideal person to work for a social media for sure. company that is You have to be centric. passionate about it. And, like, you bring that because you yeah. love comedy, too, for I sure. I love it. It's so fun. I get to, like, clip, you know, footage of comics every day. And yeah. I get to interview comics at all the festivals and I was gonna ask that like yeah. that's such an amazing part of your job is that you get to meet all of these crazy famous and intimidating oh my comedians. god <laughs> so no, it's insane has there been like a favorite that you've interviewed of and course. loved yeah of course yeah Miss Taylor Tomlinson my <laughs> fucking hero of Dude, course of like course. Yeah. and not to like I've I've met so many cool people and to be honest like had really good experiences with all of them and okay. then still like I can't even believe I've met these people. Like, yeah. these are, like, my heroes, I you know? know? I know, It's yeah. crazy. Like, it's it's seriously crazy, and I'm, like, super, like, just, like, grateful that I can even mm-hmm. do this damn thing. But yeah. Taylor Tomlinson is my favorite comedian. Yeah. She's so funny. She's, she's so smart. She's so talented. She's yeah. so young. Like, I don't know yeah. how she's doing it. She's amazing. And I got to meet her my first Just for Laughs working. I was, art- I was such a noob. Like, I knew nothing yeah. about... Yeah like sort of interviewing I had done like you know marketing and writing but I'd never like interviewed people like as like a journalist you know I was like what am I doing yeah yeah and I literally just interviewed her as a comic like I was like I'm also like I didn't tell her I was a comic but that's where my questions a little bit a hundred percent like you're so what inspires you like you're so (laughs) it was (laughs) it was a whole fangirl moment and I think honestly I think well she had a good time like the in the interview she literally was like this is the best interview I've ever done (laughs) because it was so not professional yeah. like it was like I was on a red carpet and every it was like e-talk like yeah. ET news all these people yeah. next to me like the SNL podcast was there all these people next to me Jesus. and they're asking her obviously incredible questions yeah. and then I'm just there and I, I was like oh my god so I watched their special I fucking loved it <laughs> and just, I just asked her like shit that I wanted to know as a fan and yes. she like loved it and I was like okay tight so then and then I because of that like kind of leaned into that mm-hmm. and you know obviously like working at just for laughs and being a comic could seem like a conflict of interest or a weird like Mm. crossover but for me i feel like it's such an asset that i do comedy and i interview comedians because i I can tell right away when i start speaking to them that they they feel more at ease talking about their craft because they know i i mean i'm definitely not one of them but i'm like i mean you're kind of adjacent like you know like i know like you know i'm using the right words i'm not calling it like an act i'm calling it a set you know i'm like you know i'm talking about like writing more in like a behind the scenes way instead of just being like who are you dating like i hope that i'm like asking them things that are actually like interesting for them mm-hmm. to answer but also, also just I'm, interesting for me to know i'm like i just want to know. know and also very like just for last like in line with like what you should be asking yeah if you're like interviewing for just for laughs yeah it's different if it's like you know 
e-talk or whatever. Exactly. They're, they're more interested in different things. Yeah, like, I'm we're guessing. not, like, a celebrity pop culture column. Yeah. Like, we are hopefully, like, servicing comics and comedy fans. Yeah. So, like, I, I would hope it would be an asset to be a comic and be... I mean, obviously it is, and they see you as an... Ad. You've done it two mm-hmm. years? Three years two, in a row? Two years, yeah. yeah. It'll be my okay. third festival this year. That's amazing. Yeah. Are you going to... Are you... With Just for Laughs, they're, like, part of, like, different festivals now. Like, they're doing, like, Moon Tower and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. Like, are you a part of any of that? Last year, I did Vancouver, Montreal, Toronto. This year, I think I'm just doing Montreal, Toronto. Okay. But I do, like, remotely work with all the festivals. So, like, I'll be doing promo for Vancouver and then Moon Tower. And Mm then um, there's also, like, just, oops, sorry. Just for laugh, Sydney at the end of the year. There's, London, there's yeah, there's like a somewhere. Yeah, there. <laughs> there's so many. Like it's like truly there's Bermuda. Like there's so yeah. many. Oh really? Yeah. And then they had like a Just for Last Mexico cruise too. Right. Yeah. Or something like that. It's truly, sure, truly sure. Mister Worldwide over here. It's just, <laughs> but I, I mostly primarily would if if anything I would just travel to the Canadian ones. But yeah, yeah. yeah. So you have you had any? bad experiences with comedians you don't have to say their names but has mm. there ever, ever been like an interview or a run-in and you're just like that person is a piece of shit <laughs> mm, actually weirdly no well not okay. weirdly i do like i have genuinely like not even just to like sound like i'm saving my ass genuinely like every comic i've interviewed i've had like such a good time with and yeah. i feel like even like sometimes i've heard like if I'm about to interview someone, like, sometimes they'll be like, oh, by the way, like, you know, they've had a really long day or a really Mm -hmm. long travel day. They might not be in the best mood. Just warning you, it is Mm -hmm. what it is. And then for some reason, they, like, sit down for the interview and I think they realize, like, A, we're just for laughs. We're on your team. We we booked you in this festival. We we love you. Like, we want you to have a good time. We're not here to, like, you know, exploit you as, like, Mm -hmm. a celebrity or comic. But then also, like, the things that we do in the interview, it's usually, like, games for social that are just, like, really yeah, lighthearted, yeah. fun, and then questions that are actually about them mm-hmm. and not, hopefully, surface level. Sometimes they are because we just have so many people to interview that it <laughs> yeah. can get to you a lot. But, yeah, yeah, they have a good time. So, usually, they're pretty kind. Like, I can't mm-hmm. even think of, like, anyone that I was, like, ugh. Okay. That's good. I hope yeah. you don't. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's I just don't care like, for that gossip, Kira. I know. <laughs> I, like, I feel like I've been lucky. I'm, like, nervous. It's going to change, but... <laughs> I mean, you have, like, a team to protect you yeah. if, that, if any of that happens. The only, like, the only clear, like, hierarchy that I've noticed is, like, timing-wise. Like, how much time you get with comics ba- is based on how right. famous they are. Okay. Like, you know, if a comic wants to do a lot of press, that's, like, so amazing. And usually yeah. it's because they're about to go on tour or they're mm. newer or, yeah. like, they are whatever. But, you know, like, I'm only going to get two minutes with, like, yeah. Tina Fey. You yeah. know? Like, yeah. if have ever. You, have you? Oh, my God, no. Tina Literally, this is me manifest. That was a manifestation that yeah. I just put into the world. Tina Fey and Amy Poehler, I, I couldn't. I, I, I couldn't. I told... <laughs> I told my boyfriend, I said, if I ever meet Tina Fey, if I'm ever in, like, the same vicinity where we're breathing the same air, I, my life ends at that moment. Like It needs to. That's it. Like, (laughs) I'm not kidding. Tina Fey, like, like, hero. Like, genuine, like, Taylor Tomlinson, favorite comic, Tina Fey, favorite person. Person, writer, like, just, there's so, like, she's incredible. I'm so obsessed with her. Amy Poehler, too. Like, yeah. I know, like, a lot of people pair them together because whatever, but Amy Poehler is amazing. I read both of their books. Their yeah, books were too. also what catapulted me into comedy, yeah, for they, sure. They're on my shelf, like, front row. Dude. And I've read them, and I'm going to read them again, and Dude. I'm never giving them away because they're incredible. It's amazing. <laughs> I think about how, like, iconic, like, Mean Girls is in the movie. Like, just in terms of right? how quotable it is. And I'm like, right? imagine you, like, wrote that. Imagine? <laughs> like, imagine you, like, wrote... Yes. You just, Those did, lines. you just did that insane in 2005 you just did it insane and it, it came it became mean girls dude the most icon now it's a musical now another spinoff i know movie it's crazy yeah it is crazy you just did that that's 
No biggie. You, one day. I mean, you want to be a writer, right? Yeah, <laughs> one day. yeah. One or day. you are a writer. And one day, yeah. yeah. We'll see. Like, that's the thing I really like about interviewing, too, is that you get to, like, I really like coming up with, like, the, the questions and the games and, yeah. like, doing that whole, like, creative, creative directing. It's so fun. It. Yeah. I so love fun. writing, too. It's, oh, like, so it's, it's so fun. Very yeah. fulfilling. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So do you want to, like, write sketches? Or, like, what's the what's the goal with that? I don't know. I think I, when I was younger, I had, like, the, the pipe dream of being, like, I want to be on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> and then I realized I don't do nearly enough cocaine. Like, <laughs> truly not built for it. Not built for it. I'm a little baby. I don't think I can handle that schedule and that amount it of drugs. It seems a bit drugs. crazy, but who knows? I don't know. Maybe, don't know. maybe the modern SNL is more... I, no, it's still for sure insane. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's you, like you got a message from Rosebud Baker and be like, "Hey, what's your what's the schedule like?" This is literally. So I talked to I talk, I've interviewed Rosebud and I've yeah. interviewed Jay Farrow and yeah. both of them. I was I kind of was like, "How do you do other things?" <laughs> because like, yeah, SNL like comics and writers always have like multiple they're like doing a movie yeah. and then they're doing SNL yeah. and then they're like doing stand up at night. Yeah. I'm like, how the fuck? Yeah. How the fuck? <laughs> yeah. There's no way. Yeah, I don't understand it. Unless, like, there's different tiers to it. Because I know, like, Rosebud doesn't, like, perform. She writes. Yeah. But I do and... feel like writing is, like, more... Well, I guess no, because I guess dress rehearsals and stuff. Yeah. But you have to be there if you're a writer and there's dress rehearsals. Yeah, yeah. If it's your sketch. Yeah, I have no idea. I don't know. This they do have an off season. I know that. It's true. Summer, it's they true. don't do it, but still. They do get the summers off. <laughs> yeah, they're like teachers. <laughs> they're like teachers, and, except they get yeah. they get paid. <laughs> and then they just go do like the festival circuits yeah. or whatever, perform all the time. It's, it's, it's a crazy, crazy schedule. But Rosa just had a baby. I know. So like, maybe there is some balance. To Dude, it. she had a baby. Like, I don't know. These people are like warriors. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, th- I think like sketch would, I think, I think I really wanted to write for like, like late night yeah because i like especially when i like the shows that have like segments and games yes. i would love to come yeah. up with that like yeah. that's so fun but i also don't one thing i'm i is like my my weak spot and forever will be in comedy is like i'm not a political comic at all mm. and i'm not politically savvy when it comes to the u.s <laughs> so i would never be able to write like a monologue for yeah. like jimmy fallon yeah like a yeah. current events yeah. i mean it, unless it was like just like news items that like aren't political research yeah writing. like i just don't that, think i could same. i'm Absolutely just not same. savvy when it comes to american mm-hmm. shit i'm just like <clears> i don't know what what's your, what are you talking about yeah, I mean, they, they, I'm sure they have, this is me trying to like, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let that stop you. <laughs> but I'm sure there's multiple different writers and there's some writers that do that. And some yeah, writers that potentially. Do, yeah. Yeah. I can write jokes about the Kardashians, but I can't write jokes yeah. about Biden or whatever. Yeah. Whatever's going on. <laughs> it's so true. I don't know. I would, I would love to do that writing or like writing for like a sitcom i would love literally my dream would be like to work for mindy kaling like (laughs) like to work on the sex lives of college girls would be my fucking dream like i love like that type of sitcom that type of modern girly sitcom i love that so that could be a dream also just like ghost writing for people would Mm -hmm. be really fun just Mm -hmm. just for comics and then obviously potentially doing stand-up myself too yeah What's your, like, goal with stand-up, then? Like, I don't know. Forward? I just really like doing it. Yeah. It's, like, a good, it's good to have a hobby that isn't related to... Well, now it is related to work, but... <laughs> it's you, not the same. It's not the same. We, we've, we've definitely <laughs> yeah. figured it out. It's not the same yeah. at all. <laughs> I don't know. I love it. I love, like... The thing that I like about stand-up uh, is that I feel like a lot of stand-up now is very, like like I said, like political or like very like argumentative or very yeah. like sort of like making a making a point, talking about breaking things down and, you know, making like a taking a stance on like certain yeah, issues, which is yeah. great. Like I yeah. love comics like that. But like we started with like where we are with this episode just like we were just not that way that's just not me like yeah you know i like i'll watch like michelle wolf special and be like she's so fucking smart and like yeah. this is so great i'm so stupid i'm so stupid <laughs> and that's fine and to yeah. be honest like my goal with comedy is just to f- make people laugh and forget yeah. about the misery of yeah. living like yeah. genuinely i think i just like being goofy i just yeah. like talking about things that are like hopefully relatable and normalizing like silly aspects of like womanhood like yeah of course and just life and just whatever and 
that's what I would hope what my stand up would do is just like yeah. make people like feel less alone and more happy. Yeah. <laughs> I think you do that. Thank I've you. seen I've seen you do that. So, yes. Thank you. <laughs> well, and being positive. I don't think like there's no place there's no space in my stand up for negativity and mm-hmm. and like pessimism and like yeah. and like you know, I I'm not gonna fight an audience member. I'm not gonna no. like I'm not gonna roast you if I just met you. Like no. we're all here. Let's all have fun. Like yeah, <laughs> that's so lovely. And like there's other comedians that will do that and like you don't need to do that. Yeah. They're already yeah. doing it great. I'm yeah, fine. Yeah, it's like no. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean yeah. if I stand up did become like a career that would be amazing. Yeah. I don't know. I just have like so many so many like goals. Also like interviewing I really, really like. So yeah. if I did like some kind of journalism, I think yeah. that'd be great too. I don't awesome. know. That's so cool. The road's open for me, I suppose. I, I love it. I can't wait to see more <laughs> of you. <laughs> well, we have to wrap up. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I told you, there we always end with two questions. And I, I'm leaving time for one of them. Cause you said you have a lot yeah. that you want to say. Uh, but the two questions that we always finish with on the listeners know is, what is the hardest thing you've ever been through? And what are you most passionate about? And you can answer mm-hmm. one. You can answer both. You can... Yes. <laughs> Go for it. I'm going to answer both because I I love fucking talking. <laughs> I love listening to the sound of my voice. Um, oh my gosh, which one first? No. <laughs> um, okay, the well, I, I was actually thinking about the hardest, the one that's like the hardest thing you've ever been through yeah. because I feel like I'm a very avoidant person when mm. it comes to emotional turmoil mm-hmm. and I don't feel things fully. Okay. I just sort of like I said I'm like nothing's that deep yeah like even things that have like that have really affected other people in my life that I was there for haven't affected me the same yeah like for example like my parents divorce like did not affect me nearly as much as it affected like my sister Mm -hmm. and like it was pretty like tumultuous like they got divorced my dad got remarried really quickly and then re-divorced and we had like step siblings and we moved and then we moved back and our yeah. childhood home had to be sold because it was like all, yeah. this, all this like crazy shit but to me I was like okay like it's not that deep like I don't know I don't know I was just like I think in the moment it kind of sucked but I was also like you know it could be way worse like yeah like I it's still a have good... a, I still have a house I still have two houses like you yeah. know yeah it's a good mindset to be in it does protect you a bit yeah and so that's that's a good thing but you I do understand like other people having a different experience with that obviously yeah definitely so that was like the one that i was thinking of and then the personal one that's, that would probably be like actually the hardest thing for me was like before i started stand up which is why stand up is so nice and great yeah. as a hobby and yeah. also like a passion <laughs> but it's because i i remember like obviously like okay this is kind of a long story so i'm gonna try and like no, okay. condense it, it. <laughs> but obviously like i said i was like a very athletic person mm-hmm. sporty was in like sports from a young age and like and when I was a dancer I was also like older like I was in Mm -hmm. university when I was dancing so Mm -hmm. I was old enough that like social media started to become a thing and like like comparing Mm -hmm. yourself to people and understanding what like body image issues are and all that yeah it's like so terrible like when you're also doing a sport that requires you to like look a certain way for auditions yeah and you're being compared literally like in a lineup to other women and like being told to wear like tight clothing so you can show your body off to the booker like all this stuff like and you're just like in practice with like a team full of girls that have their own insecurities and like talk about their weight in front of you in front of a giant mirror like (laughs) terrible of toxic so toxic and i didn't realize like because i was on a team that was very good like very like not like that Mm -hmm. very like supportive but around like the end of my dance journey i was placed on a team of all women and they were all very insecure and it was mm-hmm. like super i'd like didn't realize it leached on to me until i like left That's, that sport yeah and i like was like well there was like a whole falling out with like dance in general like i was like like a like a competitive like 20 hours a week dancer all my friends were dancers like that yeah. that was my life and then there was like a huge blow up at my studio with like the studio owner a big like scandal and mm-hmm. i like stopped dancing and it was like 0 to 100 like just like that and then like 
It's like mm-hmm. you go from like playing sports every day and being so active to doing nothing. Yeah. You start to gain weight like quickly yeah. or yeah. like just like you just start For to sure. look Your different. Body changes. You feel different. You, have you to go like, through puberty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You have to like adjust to yeah. like your life. It's just like tough. Like you're just yeah. like, oh, this is like not what I remember looking like or mm. feeling like. Yeah. And then I went right into full night full time nine to five job, like this was after I graduated yeah. university. So then all I was doing was like working every day and mm. being so bored with the monotony of it i hated it like corp- yeah. like going before the pandemic like having yeah. to go into work every day yeah. and come home from work all i was doing was working and then i became like obsessed with the gym because it was the only yeah. thing i could do yeah that like i didn't have any more sports yeah so then i was like just going to the gym just working and i was like fucking depressed like yeah. so depressed yeah. like the only thing i cared about was like getting skinnier and like that's it yeah, I had hard. no passions. Yeah, I had no, sure. like, nothing. Yeah. And, yeah, like, started going to therapy, like, mm. basically had an eating disorder, like, mm-hmm. was obsessed with the gym. Yeah. Was working, but, like, hating my job because I didn't yeah. have anything, like, thrilling yet. I wasn't yeah. doing the social media part yet. Yeah. And, yeah, so I was just like, yeah, man, really this tough. sucks. <laughs> it's really tough. It sucks. I remember, like, I remember, like, feeling like I was, like, I remember there was, like, a period of that time where I was, like, I I couldn't like genuinely laugh. Mm. Like things funny things would happen and I would be like I should be laughing, but I just like it's not that funny. Like Yeah. Yeah. Nothing made me laugh. Yeah. Nothing made sure me genuinely sign. smile. <laughs> That's a sure sign of depression. You're yeah. like we I don't feel happy when other people are happy. Yeah. Why is that? <laughs> yeah, you just like yeah. don't feel any like range of emotion yeah. and like yeah. yeah, it's it's scary. Like there's that there's like also just not feeling like you're like anything thrills you so you're like why am I even doing anything yeah I know super scary yeah. feeling like yeah. all that stuff plus yeah. like when because I was getting so skinny I was like I'd lost my period so I had no like like yeah. that's like really bad for your health yeah there's really like scary. physiological things happening yeah mental things happen all so like, much and then yeah. your parents are just like you're too skinny and you're like, <laughs> you're like, <laughs> Mom. they're like you should eat a brownie and you're like yeah. this is just so different than that yeah. but <laughs> doesn't, doesn't work that way doesn't work that oh, way. oh man it was so funny i mean it wasn't funny but it was just like s- s- terrible yeah. and then like funny enough the pandemic happened mm. and i started doing comedy yeah and then i a i was not forced to i was able to work from home so yeah. it was like way more of a balance i got to like have a better social life obviously sure. not because the pandemic was happening but in terms of like yeah i got to like you weren't going into work it no. wasn't consuming like you know you're on in the office under like yeah. neon lights yeah like you know the work balance was better you realize yeah. like it's not that deep it's just work. you're not saving lives you're yeah. posting on social media yeah yeah like the work became easier like i got to see my family more mm-hmm. i got to spend more time at home and just like watch movies with my family yeah, yeah. eat more home-cooked meals yeah. and realize it's not that scary like yeah because yeah. the world is ending and you don't need to be skinny like yeah. you know like it really like put everything into perspective like the pandemic and For sure and there realize- was more like talk like one positive thing you can say about the pandemic is that like mental health was like talked about Mm -hmm. even though it was before for many years like people it more so than like you know in the 90s or early 2000s where like no one talked about anxiety or depression Mm -hmm. but like in the pandemic they're like oh people are suffering right now because they're not seeing people yeah and like if you're feeling bad like even like workplaces were doing like if you're feeling bad take some time off yeah yeah and like we're like you never saw like employers giving a shit before no yeah which was like a good thing um i think it was so it was it was like obviously the pandemic was terrible for so many people yeah yeah. But it was like really great for me. <laughs> like it I really hear that like a lot from a lot more people than you would think. Man. <laughs> for sure. Like actually, I thrived. <laughs> it it was kind of because it just for me it was like I feel like so many jobs and people in, like doing nine to fives would probably attest to this. But like yeah. when you work a nine to five, it doesn't matter the industry. They make you feel like it's life or death. They're like, yes. if you don't crunch those yeah. fucking numbers, <laughs> like if you don't, if we don't pass this quarter, you yeah. know, like all this bullshit. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't meet this deadline, all this stuff, it's life or death. It's so For much sure. stress. For and sure. then the pandemic happened, and everything stopped. Yeah, you're just like, actually, no one, nothing, none of this matters. None of this matters. Yeah, literally, none of this matters. Yeah, we're There's... all gonna die. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah we're all dying. And like, like yeah, 
so silly. I was like, oh my god, why am I like, why don't I just do something that makes me like hap- exactly. slightly happy? Yeah. And like comedy was that. Yeah. And then yeah. doing comedy and also like before the pandemic, I feel like the only like people that I saw, I had like a few friends that I would hang out with, but it was a lot of like digital stuff, mm-hmm. which you're like, you're comparing yourself to people you don't know. And, like, yeah. following lifestyles you yeah. that don't actually... That aren't real. Mm. And then when mm. you're spending time doing comedy, meeting people in the real world, you're like, oh, my God, like... Yeah. yeah. I'm crazy. <laughs> like, this is fine. Like, you know, you just, like, everything becomes normal. Yeah. You're like, yeah. you, like, start laughing again. Yeah. You start yeah. caring about something that isn't the way you look, yeah. like, which is really important for yeah. people, especially women, to... Yeah, for sure. To feel. Like, for feeling sure. like you're doing something that is not related to the way you look is Absolutely. fabulous. Absolutely. <laughs> like, it's so, like, it's, relieving. God, it's I'm, relieving. Yeah. I mean, I was part of, like, the whole, like, early 2000s, like, Kate Moss. Yeah. Like, Paris Hilton generation. And it, it took a fucking toll. Yeah. Let me tell you. It does. And I can't, like, because social media... Like, I can't imagine, like, like young people, like, that go through, like, so, like, the social media oh is just, God. like, saturates you with it. Yeah. So much. Uh, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's so crazy. Like, you'll watch, yeah. like, six videos in a row of, like, girls being, like, what I eat in a day, and they yeah. all start with lemon Shut water. The fuck up. And then you go outside and you touch some fucking grass, yeah. and your boyfriend's like, do you want a croissant? And you're like, yeah. Like, it's, like, <laughs> yeah. not that fucking deep. Like, yeah. Yeah. it really isn't, like, it really contextualized everything for me, just being in the real world. And then, yeah. obviously, comedy made me, like, so yeah. much more happy and, like, yeah. made me, like, be way more social. I was going mm-hmm. out all the time, like, going for to sure. shows, meeting people, like, yeah just like busying myself like Mm kind of like taking like you know the time that I had when I was doing sports yeah was now filled up by comedy in the same way same like fulfilling way so it turns out to be happy you need to be social you just need to do something to do stuff yeah and yeah yeah Yeah. for sure for sure well I'm glad the pandemic shifted perspectives yeah that's amazing it did I think it did for a lot of people for sure and I'm glad to have you in the scene like it's been amazing to see you grow yeah yeah it's been nice yeah yeah what are you most passionate about then (gasps) oh my gosh how do you choose with all of these things I don't know (laughs) I mean obviously like tangible things would be like comedy writing and yeah. I feel like when I was reading that question like what are you yeah. most passionate about I was like man I don't know like what to choose like what yeah I feel like I'm passionate about yeah. a lot of things I'm, I mean I'm a Ever very said like weed. Ever so, said weed. so you don't have to go the comedy route at all just like someone huh. that makes you fucking happy yeah. honestly I feel like this is gonna sound so annoying but I don't care <laughs> fuck all you haters I don't care <laughs> I feel like I'm passionate about positivity. Like, genuinely, yes. like, yes. genuinely, I'm, like, you know, like, I'm, like, such a, like, let's not fight. Yeah. Let's, no conflict. Oh, my God. Let's yeah. have a good time. Circle let's be episode. happy. <laughs> Do things that make you happy. Yeah. Be yourself. Like, you know, yeah. comedy. Positivity. There's a lot of cynics sure. in comedy. For sure. Let's not be cynical. Let's just have a good time. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I want my comedy to, like, hopefully make people happy. and Spread the positivity. Yeah. Yeah. Also, like... I support this. If you need to do things that help you escape things that freak you out, like, you know, people are always... I'm such, like... I'm My family roasts me all the time, but <laughs> I never watch, like, you know dramas or like yeah. or like serious shit yeah. i'm never reading like books that are really enriching my brain yeah i'm like watching emily in paris i'm reading smut yeah. okay it's, it's always like light <laughs> yes. or like barely stimulating my brain i'm watching yeah. the great british bake-off yeah and i'm <gasps> zipping it okay <laughs> like, i can have a whole episode about the dude, great british i actually you know what fuck it i changed my answer i am passionate about the great british bake-off okay <laughs> that is the greatest show of all time i'm so pa- i'm so passionate about baking shows yeah. it's i can't even tell you like how much they've made my life better yeah. they're incredible <laughs> they're so good yeah. they're so good no one's watching a baking show being like oh yeah life Especially sucks the great british bake-off like Dude. it's so aesthetically delightful 
It's they're so in delightful. this like you know the English like you know countryside. Yeah. And they're you know they're in like this tent and there's flowers and there's butterflies and then they're they're baking these biscuits and it's just yep. like I need all of this in my life. Yep. Yeah. Yes, I yeah. fucking love baking shows. Yeah. That's my that's my one. Did you watch the Canadian version? Yeah, or... I did. Yeah. <laughs> I watched it when Dan Levy was. You know what? Yeah. Actually, okay. Yeah. Actual career goal, not kidding, not kidding, career goal, hosting a baking show on the Food Network. Absolutely. You're going to do it. That's my, You're gonna that's do my it. goal. That's, I saw that's Dan Levy goal. host the Canadian. Yeah. I said, that's yeah. me, bitch. Next. And he was incredible. Put me in next. Yeah, that's the, <laughs> Dan Levy is the reason why I watched it. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, they knock off at the British one. Yeah, yeah. And then like, I saw that Dan Levy was, yeah. I was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to watch it this. Was, it was the Great Canadian Bake Off to Schitt's Creek Pipeline that really changed my life. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. Yeah. Well, that's a great way to end <laughs> talking about the Great British Bake Off uh, and Dan Levy. Uh, thank you so much for being here. No that problem. You are incredible. This has been been really, really fun. Um, but before we sign off, uh, where can people find you? Um, y- hopefully not in my house. Uh, <laughs> knock first. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Kira Carlton and hopefully one day on TikTok. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> why? But yes, okay. <laughs> you know what? Maybe one day. <laughs> All the cool kids are doing TikTok and yeah. I don't like it, but it's fine. I kind of want to be a cool kid. Yeah. It's funny. It's literally my job. I do too, but... I do this for other comedians. I don't do it for myself. <laughs> that's fine. It's, fine. it's totally fine. That's fine. <laughs> All right. Well, follow Kira and, uh listen like subscribe you know where to find everything houseofstonepodcast.com thank you for listening and bye bye